Hey, what's going on YouTube? I am back and this time around I have something different. Still commentary, but uh, we're going to cast the whole game zoomed in. No, I'm kidding. We're not going to do that. Uh, but I'm actually going to cast one of the games that I played just the other day. Um, I don't know if you've heard this yet, but I've been having some issues spectating. In fact, I think spectating in general is just not working right now. Not to mention the fact that I can't access player profiles like I could on Voobly. And normally what I do is go to a profile, look through the matches, do some homework, and then cast. But I can't do that right now with DE2, which has been making me sad. <laughs> but uh, I've been playing some games. And uh, don't worry, players are going to send me some recorded games and I'll get it to YouTube. I decided to upload this game right here. Um, it's, it's an interesting topic because people... Like, I play the game a lot, and I play the game at a high level as well as cast. Uh, and there are people out there who'd like to see my gameplay, but I am a caster. And I, I want to be known for casting, and I want people to be able to come to this channel and expect a certain thing, and expect a certain level of quality. So, for that reason, I don't really upload my own gameplay much. So I decided I could maybe cast this and talk through the pros and cons of, of my decisions, enemies' decisions, and tell you what I was thinking in the moment. Mm -hmm. So here I am in the red. I chose the Huns for this. Uh, this is Continental, and the way this works is the queue... So I queued up to play a ranked game. I got Kamigawa, who's a very strong Italian player. Uh, he's in like the top 50 or 60 of the world. And... Um, and so once I saw it was Continental, I decided on Huns. Kamigawa has just said to me uh, that he did not pick and he went random civilization, but he got Italians. And Italians is quite a good civilization for any map that has water. Uh, and I'll actually show you why they are a good map if you happen to be new to the game. So did I say good map? I meant good civ. So they're an archer naval civilization. First off, advancing to the next stage costs 15% less for Italians. Their dock technologies cost 50% less, and their fishing ships cost 15% less. So, I mean, the first three bonuses right there all apply to water maps. Now, not as much in Continental, right? Because in Continental, while there is water, it's not as important as, say, islands. But still, you know, fishing is going to be huge because of all the food potential out here. And all the salmon, all the snappers. And so I knew going into this game that, okay, I'm going to have the flexibility of not having to build houses. I'm going to save wood. I have mobile options like cab archers and knights. However, I'm probably going to struggle on water against this guy. So what I'll tell you is my goal was to go one dock so I could fish and just get a little bit of food income, uh, but not overcommit to water because I felt like it would be a mistake to overcommit to water against someone who has all those bonuses. So let's look at the maps here as well. So mm -hmm. Continental, you, you basically have, have two large pieces of land, you can see here, uh, and then they're connected by, by, um, man, words are hard. You can tell I'm used to casting Arabia because I don't, <laughs> all these new words I need to use. But then you have like these strips of land on the sides, right? And so, you rarely are going to use the outer edges in Feudal Age and even in Castle Age, but it will become important later on. For the most part, though, you're going to be coming through the center, and there's this gigantic hill between the two of us, and that is consistent in Continental. Mm -hmm. So you have the water around the outer edge, you have some water in the middle, two strips on the sides, then one big thing of land in the center. So like, controlling this hill is insanely important, but then you have the outer edges, the water that's important, and then you have the strips of land. So at different stages of the game, this becomes um, essential to control. If you were to go for the strips of land on the sides now, it would make much sense and be a waste. So I, again, I'm going to talk you through like I'm going to talk you guys through when those things are important. Um, but anyways, I'm looking to get to feudal age as quick as possible. I pushed in three out of my four goats, and now with all the food I'm going to have. You'll see a big transfer. The water maps are really, really unique in that. Once you get the food to go up to Feudal Age, you normally transfer all of your villagers, or most of your villagers, to wood and to gold. And you can see that change here at the top left if you want. That's interesting that I'm going to beat the Italian player to the next stage. 
That's interesting, because it is cheaper for him. But I guess he must not have pushed goats or something. Where were his goats at? Ah, his goats were out here? He might have had more. Okay, so, so yeah. Makes, it makes a little bit more sense now. But now he has 12 on wood and 5 on gold. I, uh... I probably collected more food than I should have, because remember, you have the fishing ships bringing in food. You don't need 200 food right now. He scouted me. I mean, my my golds are atrocious on this hill. If I lose this hill, I lose the game. Like, I need, I knew I needed map control because I'm Huns, and I'll probably fall behind on water, but with a map like this... Like, look at his golds. Everything is on the back. <laughs> it's so, it's so frustrating, man. Everything is on the back for him. But you see what he's up to? He's going for a second dock. And then I figured, nah, forget about it. Like, I would definitely make some stuff on water, but I'm not going to go to dock commitment. Instead, my plan was to go for some land aggression. So uh, I build up Eric's here. I'm walling up. I, um... I did happen to get a hit in on his scout earlier with my villagers. I don't know if you spotted that. But that's actually important because I could snipe that with my scout. And so, um... Okay, one big thing in DE2 right now that it's a bug that needs to be fixed is when fishing ships finish a shore fish, they do not automatically go to a deep fish, and it's the same vice versa. Which is not how the actual game, or like the, the base game worked. But yeah, I'm going one range archers, two range archers soon, and one dock fire galleys. Meanwhile, this guy is going three docks and walls. And if you haven't seen it already, you're going to see just how strong walls are on these hybrid maps. And you'll see just why I'm not a huge fan of playing them, because this guy pretty much, he can wall out all of my military because of the way this map is set up. And go for water and play towards his strong suit and then, you know, make life complicated for me. But he is a long way for me. Uh, we're at 28 eco units. But, uh, sorry, we're both at 28 eco units right now. And momentum is always a good thing, right? So if I start getting momentum with numbers and keep them alive, then Castle Age can be good. Now, what does he know about my base? Okay, I see he's walling. I attack for a second. He does not know that I built a barracks. He does not know I built an archer range. This, in my opinion, is really poor from him. It might have a lot to do with the fact that his scout is weak. It's amazing how a weak scout in Dark Age can make all the difference, but... Alright, here I am. I'm just going to send that villager back home, I guess. I've walled this right side. I've built a blacksmith. And it is time to send some units forward. Meanwhile, I've been able to hold him off on water. So, like, so far, I'm surprised that I've been able to fish as much as I have. Um, he could have pressured me more, I think. Now, granted, he's going to have a free fish boom back here, and there's, like, thousands of food. But um, I really think that he needed to, to kill my fish a bit earlier, you know? I'm getting the repair in. Just just buy in time. Because I've committed to land. He doesn't have an answer for me just yet. So, I've been picking Huns for Continental and Rivers. I just feel it's very... You have so much flexibility. And again, a nice repair there for myself. Sorry, I'm not trying to, to compliment myself, but I am casting. And this was pretty much inevitable, right? It's pretty much inevitable that I'm going to lose my fishing ships eventually. I guess he sent his other uh, fire galleys around the long way, which is what took him so long. But still, I'm able to keep one alive, which I'm happy with. And meanwhile, I'm just knocking on the door. And so now I've got to be thinking, all right, he's got fish. I need to get to Castle Age soon. If I get to Castle Age, I can make some siege on this hill. At the very least, I could get crossbow and elite skirm. But he's he's already making defensive skirmishers, and he's just walled behind again. 
So like, while I was playing this, I'm just like rolling my eyes basically, because I hate, I mean he's doing the right thing, but you know, I'm just not a fan of the fact that I can make 20 units and there can be no benefit <laughs> because this is so choke pointy, right? Now what I could have done is I could have ran the whole way around. Unfortunately for me, that I'm in the center, it would take probably five minutes to walk the whole way around. But I could have gone around. There's a risk in doing that, though, because then he could send his military across in, uh, in the center. So I think it's better, even if I don't kill anything, it's better for me if I'm able to know what he's up to. So I do not get damaged on land. So I lost an archer here, but uh, I have an opportunity to push in. Now he does have fletching, but I snipe his scout, and my scout's still there, and my, my scout will help out big time here. I have good numbers, and I have good kills. And by the way, my one fishing ship's still alive. And my scout goes down, but let's see, a total of 10, 13 numbers versus 4. And so I'm thinking, wow, I'm actually pushing him. He has the fish boom, but I'm actually pushing him. Now, once the guy gets armor and enough skirmishers, it's going to be very difficult for me. And the last thing that I want to do is lose my numbers. But I am, um, I'm a micro nerd, as they say. So I'm always tempted to run around with my army. Yeah, okay, so I've completely lost water now. And he has six fishing ships, seven fish, like eight or nine fishing ships. And he's on his way to Castle Age. Now, to put things in perspective, to show you how good Italians are with the fish boom and with their cheaper uptime, he used the market a little bit, but he did not need to sell all of his stone and buy food like I did. So I knew that he was probably going to up before me. And so I decided, and I, I can't really say if this is, it's certainly not ideal. But I think it was right at the time. I, I decided it would be best for me to sell my stone and buy food so I could get up to Castle Age and, and continue you know, pushing in the center. Uh, you know, micro-nerding away here. I've been able to get some pickoffs. It's risky business because he has mainly his skirmishers in front. Nice little split. Oh, wow. This guy's a caster? Watch, I'm going to compliment my split, and then I lost to Archer. Beautiful. Okay, so he has mainly skirms now. So he's definitely going to lead skirm. And so there's two things that I could do to counter that. That would be a stable for a knight, or it would be a siege workshop. Uh, siege workshop takes time. If you build the stable while you're on your way up to Castle Age, you make one knight, and you might be okay. Now, it's super complicated against Italians, though, because remember, Italians also have the Genoese Crossbowman, which is a unique unit, and that has a bonus versus cavalry units, so that would have a bonus versus my knights. So, if it basically, if the Italian player gets to full skirmisher or Genoese Crossbow at any point in this game, all my options die. Every single option. But I've been able to be aggressive, and I've been keeping him on the back foot despite not having water. That is what's good for me right now. So I'm going to show you the difference between someone who has a fish boom and someone who does not have a fish boom here in a second. I have 10 on food. He has 13 on food. But he's he can go for a town center and probably another town center soon. So he, he's actually going to have a villager lead as well pretty soon. My elite skirm upgrade. Actually, did I not click elite skirm yet? No, I'm going crossbow. Oh, this is a mistake. I thought I clicked elite skirm. I went crossbow, no elite skirm, but my knight's here. My knight does have armor. And I did hold to the hill. And this ended up being quite good. A, a big cleanup. That was good dodging to avoid his skirms. Ends up being fine. But I think probably would have been worth it for my own elite skirm. Okay, the knight runs in. <laughs> it's so funny like I, I've i been critical of like, Hera in particular in the past who's a pro of being too active with his military and throwing stuff away now that I'm casting my own game it's the exact same thing for me like I'm super aggressive 
But there are like some small instances where I am wasteful. But you know, I, I'm siege workshopping the center. Yeah, there's there's another waste, and uh, I have the hill. So this game is going to be very T90 farmy, by the way. It's going to be very T90 farmy. I was uh, just not playing very clean. It's one of those situations where I almost play too fast, and so you'll see misclicks and idles, and I'm just not paying attention because I'm moving around too much. But still one TC, and if I wanted a second TC, I'd need a lot more wood. I only have 20 lumberjacks. Wow. Uh, I don't have enough wood right now. And then also what I would need is I would need stone. So I need to buy that stone now. It's not going to be easy. But this hill is going to be so important for my success. And the fact that I can be annoying with cav archers. So it was a good move from Kamigawa to make crossbows in combination with his skirms because what that did was... Oh! Nice micro. What that did was it gave him more of an answer to me sending out a few knights. But as I hold the hill and as he addresses it this direction, I decided to run in this way and see what I could find. It is 56 villagers for Kamigawa, 57 now, and just 52 for myself. He has two TCs to create vills out of, and he has fish. Actually, does he have three TCs now? Nope, just two TCs. But as I always say in my commentary, vill count's a bit deceiving, right? Uh, what really matters is if the vills are working efficiently. I swear that cav archers are worse in DE. It seems like they fire so slow and they're inaccurate or something. But yeah, he's defending nicely with those skirms. He was able to defend nicely against the Maganel. It's 36 kills, 35 deaths for Kamigawa. This, this is very close. If I get one more kill, we're even on the KD. 79 pop for him, 70 for myself. Again, unfortunately, I don't really have the town centers. I'm just now adding a second TC. I do have slightly more military. I certainly have mobility, and that's what I'm going to have to use in this game. Uh, he's looking for me here. He'll find me. But this is how you have to use mobile units. Keep him here, run around, and then run in on the right-hand side. I freaking love Huns. Like, Huns just suit my playstyle. I love it. I don't love the fact that I'm going to lose my Cav Archers, though. This is how I think Age is meant to be played. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, like, turned into Spring. But, um... I, I just love how, how mobile you can be with Huns. A and... The unit... The unit, uh... Unit positioning is so much more important. You don't rely on walls and a boom. It's like hit and run, hit and run, hit and run. So now here, I'll show you again. Okay, his crossbows, his army arrives here. And so now I'm going to try and, and think about pushing the center. Not easy to execute. And certainly I'm not doing it perfectly, but there's my third TC. And uh, I'm only 10 bills behind. Okay, so... You've pretty much seen what the general game plan is going to have to be for me in this game, because like I said earlier, Skirm, Genoese Crossbow, uh, you know, assuming they're full upgrades and Imp, it really counters everything the Hunts have. Maganels are really good in Castle Age, but um, Maganels... Uh, I can't go beyond Maganels, sorry, I can't get on a Jura's Hunts and Imp. So this is going to be the theme throughout the whole game. Uh, but wow, Kamigawa gets a really nice counterattack in. It takes him to 80 villagers, and I'm only at 65 now. But I had a big ball of cav archers prepped. See there? I didn't even hit. It's really weird. So I get on top of them, and I will finally get my kills. Oh, I got a big shot there! How T90 blind is that? I didn't even remember that that happened. And I missed something casting my own game. He really needs an answer to the Maganels. But it's not going to be easy for him. Because I prepped monks here. My cav archers are considering a dance to the right again. And he's teched in tonight. He sends one knight out. I'll go for a conversion. I'll get the conversion. 
And now he is very much undecided. Where does he go? Where does he send his units? Does he send his units to the hill? Or does he send his units to the right-hand side? Now, here's an issue for me. I have two or three monks here. Protecting five Maganels. That's it. So if these knights were to go to my Maganels, uh, say goodbye. <laughs> say goodbye to all of them. And, uh, you know, you can only poke the poke the beehive so much before it ends up... Before, before uh, it ends up hurting you. I don't know where I was going with that. There's an obvious risk for him to do in doing this. Uh, and I do get some nice conversions. But my Maganels are going to go down, and that means maybe his skirms will be a little bit more effective. Now here, I do get into his eco, but his skirms find me. This has been subpar commentary, but the game's pretty good. 91 villagers for Kamigawa. He's had quite a few idols, though. And 80 villagers for myself. And I lost my Maganels, but I got conversions. I'll uh, snipe some villagers as he's building this castle. And my military count's pretty good. It's 30 to 16. Okay, so at this point, when someone builds a castle like this, this is probably the last time you're ever going to run through this area. And I know he's about to make Genoese, and I know he's defending with skirms in the back, so I just sent my knights right in. Now, this was really weird pathing. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I can't really explain what went down here. I remember when I was playing it, it was weird. The idea here was to use the knights against the skirms and have the cav archer snipe vills. We'll see how successful it was. I mean, I'd say this is pretty successful so far. But I couldn't walk through. You'll see me try and send my knights through. I think in AOC, so like classic age, you could do that. This is one of those situations where I think the pathing is better in DE or more realistic. Like I shouldn't be able to send these knights through cav archers. I think of the old game I could. I was expecting it to work because I was used to it, and sadly, I couldn't handle the, some of the range units that were out here. I did okay, right? And in fact, I did more than okay, because it's 95 villagers, 96 for myself, and 92 for him now, so that caught me up. It's also hugely important that his castle is placed here, because ideally, he would have it on this hill, but I'm still not giving that, him that hill. I decided to castle further back. Um, would definitely be a mistake for me to castle the hill here, I think. Because that would... If he imps faster, and he probably will as Italians, he could trap that down. Did I just dock again? Oh no, he's making fishing ships back here. Mm, man, that is a lot of food eco for him. Remember, his golds are safe here. He does have his third gold on the right. And while, as I say that, he's town centering it. Why did I say WTF? I probably I probably made a mistake. I like my units pathed weirdly and I was complaining. Um So I'm I'm saving res, but he's already on the way to the Imperial Age. So throughout this whole game, it's been pretty close. I, I've done well with my kills. I've done well with my mobility. However, Fact remains that he has amazing, he has an amazing fish boom going, and he can now make Genoese cross moment, which, in combination with like skirms or knights or something, are deadly against Huns. So I'm trying my best here. I'm trying to get up this hill before the Imperial Age. My skirms have no armor upgrades, but I have enough of them to push up the hill, and I, I just knew I needed to buy myself a bit of time. He has four villagers less than me, but he's halfway to imp, and now I'm 10% of the way up to imp. So, if you have a mobile sieve versus a non-mobile sieve, what you need to do is try and control the game. Control the pace of the game. If you snowball your units and just fight in the center the whole time, that's just going to suit the snowball sieve. That's going to suit the slow sieve. And so... This is good, because I need to control this hill for as long as possible. But the things that I need to start thinking about, otherwise I might die if I don't, is expanding. Um, 
So uh, building some stables and archery ranges on the left. This is an area I can run in. And once he gets Bracer, you can easily push me in the center of, the, of this map. Bracer and Chemistry, Arbalest, all those techs are going to come in. He has so many resources. So how many, how much food eco do I have right now? 36. It's not bad. But I'm just getting Wheelbarrow, which is a pretty important eco tech. Any T90 farms? Oh, yeah. Basically, not having farms in one area is T90 farms. I'll just build farms elsewhere because I forget to look at my main TC. Because I'm moving around so much. He has a lot of military units now. Just about as much as I do. Uh, however, he will have Imperial Age technologies. His knights have chain barding armor, so that should take care of the Maganel. And this should be a very quick cleanup for him. Very quick cleanup. Okay, so I sent Cav Archers this way. This is actually what I can see, if you're curious. Um, I docked here. Interesting. <laughs> this is not bad. Um, oh no, this is so bad. T90, you're such a noob. Why are we casting noobs on this channel? This isn't community games. But yeah, so I, I have pretty good vision on where I should be. Um, it's just about executing in the moment. Because the populations are close. I'm starting to send some units around to the left. I see that he has farms there. But I also need to deal with this at the same time. So, funny enough, the best way for me to deal with this big clump of units... First off, I need full skirm. But it's to distract him. So, as he's sending everything here, if I can hit him on the left and hit him on the right... Then what that does is that pulls new units from his main army. Um, or that stops his new units from going to his main force. And instead it would it would go to the flanks. So I remember noticing this in the game. That like I I noticed he had idols here. I noticed he was not re reacting to me. So I figured okay well I'm going to do a, an insane amount of damage there. I now have to focus on this. And so I'm massing skirmishers. Actually, okay, just got Bracer. Chemistry is hopefully on the way for me. Not sure. But this is good damage. He has... Well, we both have a lot of idols, actually. But 20 plus idols is no joke. Fortunately, say goodbye to my castle. And now how do I push this? <laughs> how do I push this? He has the hill. He could get stoned for another castle. Well, the truth is I don't. I don't push it. The only thing I do here... Oh, here are my idle villagers. The only thing I do here is I hold this area. Stay here. Stay alive as long as possible here. And make a move to the right and make more consistent moves to the left. See there? He's definitely trying to stonewall that up. I'll deny that. And I'll continue to send in units. And here, see, these are the skirms that could be forward right now. Uh, these skirms now have to deal with my light calf. Now light calf and calf archers go to the gold. See, this, this has a way of slowing that main push down. And it's a way you should be trying to play Hans if you can. Like, I, I was feeling really good. I also sent some more galleys over here and sniped some fish. And my population's at 190. It went from 150 to 190. I freaking love Huns, man. I love it when I can move and breathe, you know? <laughs> and so this castle is kind of built here to stall. Um, he does have his trebs destroying some buildings, but... It's 56 military versus 42, and I'm all over him. Uh, his bombard cannon. I think that was planned to go forward. That will go down. And the guy really can't take wood easily right now. And just like that, it's, it's 200 population versus 140. So again, the the whole... The key for this, for this victory for me, and that's assuming this is a victory, is the mobility aspect. He just can't kill this now. He would have to send all of his military forward back to my base. Or, or, or sorry, back to his base. If he wanted to deal with this. He just can't breathe. He has 15 food villagers. I have 46. 
So I'm going to have consistent food income. I'm sending in another group of light cap to the left. And then now I realize all I need here is skirms and hussars. And you see how the center army is weaker now? Both because he sent numbers back home and because he didn't doesn't have resources to make more. And so it all circles back around. And I get three free trebuchets while still being in his base. So this is this could be considered wasteful. Um, I am going to lose a lot of my army underneath the town center fire. But I know he has idle time. I know that I have resources to produce more. So I, it doesn't really bother me that much. Um, I need to re-patrol these, these skirms. But yeah, this game is essentially over now. A 190 pop to 120 pop. The raids will never end, and the GG is called right when the winged hussars arrived. <laughs> Ken Migawa says this game still feels weird to me. <laughs> it does definitely feel different. Um, I forget what I said to him. Yeah, it, it feels like attack animations are a bit slower. I don't know if you guys see that. But anyways, it's going to take some time for all of us to get used to it, and I think there's going to be plenty of changes as well. And here I am complaining about the maps, yes. Because because we have like 9 or 10 map pools in ranked, and on, like those nine of those 9 or 10 maps, only 2 or 3 are, like produce really good games. On a consistent basis, I would say, because I've seen some solid Highland games. This game, I think, was really good. Like, I didn't just upload this because I won. <laughs> I'm going to upload one of my losses, a few of my losses actually, I'm sure, if I can't cast other games. But... Um... He said... What did he say? He says sometimes he doesn't see idols. So I'm not sure what he means about idols. I mean, everyone's different, right? But I, I have gotten used to looking up here, and that's made a huge difference for me. I'll be in the game and I'll be like, hmm, let's double check. Oh, wait, I have 20 on food? All right, well, that's not enough. I need to get up to 40 or 50. Like, those those stats help. Um, and I'm slowly getting used to looking at the idle counter as well. Uh, as for seeing them, that's different. Um, I think he might be talking about Dark Age. Like, in Dark Age, sometimes the villagers kind of blend in together when they're around the TC. But anyways, I thought that was a pretty good game. Um... Like I said, I've had so many people request that I like upload my own gameplay or stream my own gameplay, and I have done some streaming of my own gameplay due to the fact that I can't cast right now, but I don't know. I, I am a caster. Uh, I like to entertain with that, and I want you guys to get something consistent, so I figured, you know, why not show one of my games and just talk you through what I was thinking and how the game should be played out. I mean, the reality is Italians are better if they take advantage of the faster castle and they take this hill, I think they're significantly better than Huns. Uh, actually, they would need to wall the sides as well. And then Huns are better if they have that castle each momentum and the hill on a map like this. Uh, if Blue would have been able to push up the hill with the faster skirms with the faster castle age, then he controls this hill, then he ends up building his first castle here for sure, then I'm probably the one responding to him uh, and then I am the one who, who, you know, can't push him on water because he's Italians and might not be able to, to use any mobility on the sides. Let's go to the Chiefs, though. Uh, 272 kills for T90 official. More food, wood, stone, and gold collected for myself. It's minimal with the gold. Um, Skirm Hussar was going to be very important for me there. It, the second I got Light Kevin to his eco, that's what changed things. I was going to slow down cav archer production pretty soon because of the amount of skirms and, and genoese crossbow we had so guys again hope you enjoyed feel free to give me feedback um if you guys don't don't like me casting my own games because obviously i kind of know what's going to happen then you know let me know uh but it might be something i'll mix in every now and then right now i'm just contacting pros to send me recorded games and uh, obviously, we're hoping that it's relatively short term, this spec issue that we're having, and I'll hopefully be able to spec games again. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like, sub to the channel. I think we're closing in on 150k subs if we didn't already do that. But anyways, I'll see you next time.